So we would like to carry on. The last presentation before the lunch break will be Mr. Alexander Polyakov, and hopefully we will know a lot about SAP and other ERP vulnerabilities. So Alexander, take your time, please. Hello, everybody. Is it OK? Yeah? OK, you listen. So uh, today, I will be talking about the SAP vulnerabilities as usual. My name is Alexander. I'm from Russia. Um, I work in an ERP scan company. We uh, focused on the business application security, particularly in the SAP security. And we had a software for analyzing SAP security. And I'm also co organizer of the Zero Night Security event. It's a security conference in Russia, in Moscow. It will be in November, so you are everybody invited if you want. And also, uh, who will ask me the most interesting question? We'll get the free enters to the Zero Nights if you want. Okay, so what do we know about the SAP? Okay, okay now I see who are familiar with this software. Okay, uh, for, for others, uh, the SAP is uh, the biggest uh, software vendor for their uh, enterprise applications, for the business, business critical applications. So this is the applications where they, every company is stored all the business critical data like HR data, financial data, and etc. So it means that if some, some attacker will, would like to compromise the company, he doesn't need to compromise the domain controller or the something else. He, he, the only thing that he needs is to attack the SAP server and get all the business critical information. So that's why we are focusing on this area. Um, so this is the small agenda. I will talk a little bit about the SAP security history and whole picture, and then I will show the top 10 probably most interesting attacks, I hope so. So what basically the SAP security is uh, three different areas. Uh, the f first area is uh, business logic security is the uh, area the most uh, known for every people. So it's like the problem of segregation of duties when one person has uh, two actions like create business, uh, create payment order and approve payment order. So he can probably make uh, some fraud actions. And another area is the source code security because uh, SAP have the, its own language called ABAP and the uh, uh, every company uh, write their own uh, transactions and modules for their, their applications on this language. And this language, as any other languages, can have vulnerabilities like SQL injections and cross-site scriptings and, uh, and also the, uh, things like missing authorization checks and uh, etc. And we also have the application platform security problem, so it's like the different configuration issues, the default passwords, and etc. And this area is becoming more and more popular. So if we look at this statistic, it's like uh, how many talks w about the technical issues on the SAP platform was presented uh, every year. So this year we're expecting about more than 30 different talks, so it's like a very popular trend. And this is the number of the security vulnerabilities that was patched by the SAP. So it's like 2,300 vulnerabilities in, the, in SAP products. And most of them were patched in the later three years. It's mostly because the SAP uh, take care about this and uh, begin to take care about technical side of the, uh, uh, their security. So. What kind of vulnerabilities uh, mostly exist in the uh, SAP software? Uh, it's like most of them are the problems in the uh, ABAP uh, uh, source, source code. It's like uh, typical things like directory traversals or cross-site scripting or things like missing authorization checks because uh, when, you use, uh, when you write some kind of transaction in the in SAP, uh, you need to put uh, the authorization check. It's like a string when you 
check if the user is uh, allowed to do this action or not. And sometimes people just missing this or uh, not properly uh, use this. Okay, so it is the most common issues, but what we wanted to discuss is uh, something more uh, interesting. So not, not very common issues. And this is the list of the uh, implementation problems. So it's like when you install this, uh, the ASAP, it's not like I install the web browser, just click and next, next, next. It's just a huge implementation and it's, it can take for a long time. And there can be many uh, problems. So you can read this uh, later anyway. And this is a, another list of the top, top problems in the implementation. Like default passwords is a very big problem and etc. You also can read this. Okay. So uh, again, we have a technical uh, vulnerabilities, but uh, what can happen to the business? So we like have three different problems to the business, like espionage, the sabotage, and the fraud. Because if it's somebody can gain access to the SAP system through the, any kind of vulnerability, he can steal the financial information or the corporate secrets on a HR data and etc. He can make a denial of service attack to the uh, SAP system. It uh, will be the real problem for the company. And also, you know, the SAP systems, uh, they're collecting the information from the uh, other different systems like technology uh, systems like SCADA systems. So uh, even if the SCADA system is uh, secured from the, your company network by the firewall, some kind of data must be transmitted uh, to, the, to the company. Uh, and usually this data transmitted to the ERP system. So those systems uh, have some kind of connections. And if they have connections by the compromising the ERP system, you probably can gain, gain access to the SCADA system. And of course, any kind of fraud, so you can modify the, any kind of data. Uh, another interesting thing is that many people still think that the SAP systems is a system that can be available only internally, so it's, it's not possible to attack them from the internet. Uh, so what we do is uh, we try to find some uh, SAP systems in the internet and also we make a, a big research. It's like we do the uh, Nmap scanning for the known SAP ports uh, through the whole uh, internet and we found many interesting things like uh, so it's very easy to find the uh, SAP web uh, applications like SAP portal just by the Google search strings. Uh, I found two of them in Hungary, um, but there are many of them in the world. And, but web applications is okay, so you, they are designed to, to be used in the web. Uh, but the problem is that there are many uh, SAP services like the dispatcher, the message server, and etc. So it, it's a um, administrative services to manage the SAP, how the SAP is working. And the thing is, they shouldn't be uh, available from the internet because they must be some kind of uh, the special uh, software which called SAP Rotor, which allows only uh, connections from the specified hosts to the specified hosts. But what we found is there are about 5,000 uh, non-web non services uh, which can be which are exposed to the to the internet in the world and it was just a simple scan so we don't just scan every port of every IP address because it's very time consuming um, so this is the little graphic it's like uh, how many uh, it's a percent of companies that expose some kind of service uh, so this is the uh, worldwide uh, statistics and this is the uh, Hungary statistics. So it looks like you have the better security, uh, but probably you, uh, 
It's like in Russia, we have many uh, CP systems, but we don't expose them to the internet. They mostly uh, inside, so probably have the same uh, have the same things. But anyway, uh, there's still some uh, companies expose it. Okay, so let's go to the more technical stuff. Um, this is the list of the that I suppose. Uh, the most interesting uh, vulnerabilities that was uh, disclosed uh, 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 in 2011 and some of them in 2012. So let's go through. The first is uh, very simple. So uh, every user can uh, automate their uh, requests to the, uh, through the SAP, like automate the uh, it is possible through the uh, GUI scripting. And the thing is, if, if you write something on the GUI scripting, and if you run the script, uh, there will be a window uh, which say, says like, uh, the script is executing, would you allow it or, or not? Uh, but this security message can be easily turned off by the uh, registry modification because uh, this data is uh, located in the user uh, registry tree. So it means that if you some, somehow uh, attack the user uh, computer, you can uh, run the script uh, and the user will not, uh, will not see, this, see this. Uh, and this. The most simple attack is uh, so the script have the same rights in the application as an, the user. And depending on how many rights the user have, uh, we can do different actions. But uh, almost every user in the SAP have access to the special transaction, uh, which can send messages to other users. So by making the simple script, which uh, will send uh, messages to all the users, we can make some kind of denial of service because uh, the user will log in, will see hello, uh, hello message, he will try to close this, but uh, it will appear again. So it's very simple denial of service attack, but uh, it, it, it just works. And it also GUI scripting can be used for many other uh, critical actions, like for example, uh, you can, uh, the, the only problem is to uh, upload the script to the, to the workstation, but there are many uh, possibilities to do this, like uh, vulnerabilities in browsers and the ActiveX controls, and also using the Teensy USB flash, you know, this, this flash that works like a keyboard, so it is possible to find the laptop of the chief financial officer and uh, put this USB stick and uh, the script will be executed and the script can change, for example, the bank account number. So all the financial transactions will go to your bank account. Uh, so it's not easy to exploit because you need to have uh, access, uh, but you can make a denial of service. And this is just uh, how to prevent this. Uh, yeah, just SAP uh, asking us to put this information, uh, so you can read this uh, later. Uh, next is the uh, XML blow-up vulnerability. So it's um, uh, also pretty usual uh, vulnerability in the XML parser. Uh, it's like a denial of service attack uh, by making a, uh, many parameters with uh, malicious uh, input. But anyway, the, the thing is, uh, in SAP, we have a, a web interface for executing the RFC functions. RFC functions is like remote functions uh, uh, in SAP, so you can uh, like make a script to execute any, any action. Uh, anyway, this interface, uh, is, can be accessed by default uh, by every user. But uh, 
depending on roles uh, and authorizations, uh, it is possible or not uh, make other R different RFC calls. But there is one RFC call which is called RFC ping, and this is allowed for every user. Uh, so we can uh, use this uh, RFC ping XML request and uh, insert the malicious uh, XML blocks in this uh, XML packet and ma make a denial of service attack to the web uh, to the SAP uh, web server. And it's also possible uh, from the internet. And the only thing you need to have is a user account, or you can use the default user account. So it's a very critical sabotage attack, but again, it's not very easy to exploit because you need to have a user. Uh, next thing, that's in SAP, we have uh, different transactions. It's like uh, uh, to every action uh, in SAP that you wanted to do is, is a transaction. So there is a uh, BAPI transaction and it's not properly sanitized the input, and which is interesting because the SAP is a, it's a client-server application. It's not a web application, but in this transaction you can insert the name of the project, and it will uh, be uh, saved in the in the in the HTML. So it's it's like a, a web page in the in the normal software. And what you can do, you can uh, insert the, any kind of script and you can insert the JavaScript, but it's not like, like a normal XSS, but because you don't have any kind of session, you don't have a, a cookie and anything. The only thing, the, the only interesting thing that you can do is you can insert the uh, image uh, SLC, which, is, which, which will be uh, calling the f uh, remote file from the SMB server that you control. So what will happen if the, some, kind, some user uh, log in to this page? Uh, the, wi uh, the Windows uh, will try to uh, get access to this uh, file uh, to remote. Uh, so he will try to connect to the remote SMB server and transfer the, uh, their SMB credentials. So it's an SMB relay attack, so you can, uh, first of all, you can sniff the uh, Windows uh, password hashes and uh, you can make an SMB relay. So it's, it's not easy to exploit because uh, this transaction is uh, uh, it's like highly critical transaction it's, it's, and uh, not many uh, people have access to this uh, transaction by default, uh, but it's a big risk for exploitation of this. Uh, next uh, interesting thing is, uh, so the SAP, uh, SAP GUI application, it's, it's like a client application which, which people use to connect to the SAP. Uh, can be can store the password in the in the links. It's very uh, easy for the uh, different uh, financial and HR people that don't want to manually enter their passwords every time. So the password stores in shortcuts, and the password is encrypted. But this encryption is a simple XOR, and the key is known uh, because we, we just easily uh, decrypt the algorithm, I mean decrypt the key, and this key, the, the most problem is that key is uh, the same for every installation. Uh, so any password can be decrypted and we just uh, write the simple decryptor, and I don't think it's so it's not very complex and everybody can do this. And, but again, you need to have some kind of access to the um, application, to, uh, to the user workstation to exploit this. Uh, and the only solution by now is to disable the password storage in GUI. 
Uh, next thing is not very critical, but it's a uh, very interesting um, concept of the attack. So there is a uh, web page in the SAP uh, Java engine. Uh, this GSP scenario has uh, different parameters, and two of the parameters is the server IP and the port. Uh, what we can do is like, uh, this application can be uh, accessed from the internet because usually it is, uh, this, this engine is installed with the SAP portal. And SAP portal is, can be accessed from the internet. Uh, so what we can do is we can uh, change the IP address and the ports and this application will try to connect this IP address and ports. And by the responses we can understand, uh, we can scan in internal network of the company. So it's very easy, it's like uh, when, when the host is not alive, we will see the connection timeout response and of, or we will see the connection, uh, uh, connection refused. So by the looking at the different responses, we can understand if the ports are open or closed, or if the uh, IP addresses exist in the in company or not. And it's all possible uh, from the internet. It's not very critical, we just understand what ports are open or not, but it's an interesting concept. Um, yeah, and it's not the only one application uh, and the script which allow you to do these actions, so we found some uh, different similar uh, applications in SAP that are vulnerable to this. And next thing in the uh, J-Session ID stealing, so uh, in SAP there is a service which called uh, MMC, it's like the man remote management console for, for the SAP. And there are many uh, co uh, commands that can be executed remotely without authentication, but most of them are just like information disclosed about the logs, traces, and uh, some technical information. But we found during the one of the penetration tests uh, that in one of the uh, traces uh, there can be found the JSON ID. JSON ID can be simply copied and in inserted in the, your web browser and you will be logged into the uh, SAP portal. So you can easily find the JSON ID without authorization and uh, log in as this user in the system. And the only problem for the attacker that uh, this only works if the trace mode is on. But we found this in the, in the production system, so it's probably uh, this is this problem is existing. Um, okay, so again, the only uh, solution for this is to don't use a trace level uh, on the production systems. Uh, next thing is uh, so um, again uh, there are some kind of uh, RFC functions. Uh, using the RFC functions, you can do almost any action in the SAP. There are about 30,000 different uh, RFC functions. And of course, uh, most of the, not most, but some of them are vulnerable to different attacks. And one, one module which is called RFC grep is, uh, it was vulnerable to remote command uh, execution. And the most interesting thing that it was patched and uh, while we were working on the module for the, our scanner for implementing this uh, uh, attack, our developer was looking in the source code and found that the vulnerability was patched only uh, for the Windows but not for the Linux because uh, I don't know why, because the, the source code was looking like this. But it, if uh, operation system is Windows, it was just simple concatenation. So it is, was possible to uh, insert the operation system uh, command. But for the Linux, there was some kind of truncation, etc. It's probably it was because uh, the guy who re, re, uh, 
send the information to the SAP, uh, make an example for the Linux. So probably it was patched only for the Linux. But because for the Windows it uh, needs to have some tweaks to exploit, but anyway. Uh, so I will, no, just one slide and I will show how, it, how is it working. And so the interesting thing is the, in SAP you can um, make different things, but uh, make the same thing, but, the, but differently. Uh, for example, you can execute the RFC function uh, at least using the four different methods. Uh, you can use a special transaction which called RFC functions. Uh, you can use the RFC call remotely by the RFC protocol. You can use the um, web RFC or SOAP RFC connection to use this, uh, to call this. And also it's possible to uh, use another transaction. Um, so I'll show you. So this how the SAP uh, it looks like. So it is a client application, and here you enter the transaction what you want to execute. Uh, in this transaction, you enter the function model that you want to execute, and in function model you input the string. It's uh, the only one parameter, and in this string you insert like something and insert the operation system command. And then you see that this command is successfully executed. Uh, but this is the, the normal way for the attack. But I will show you the, also the alternative uh, way. Uh, because um, the transaction SE37 uh, that I was showing, uh, it's not very common that many users have access to this transaction. But we see a lot of companies that have many uh, users that can have access. But anyway, uh, what we can do is we can connect uh, to the system uh, using the default username and password. And this username early watch and the password is support. It's very known uh, vulnerability, but the client is uh, is 66. So the client is uh, just um, how do this? It's another way to uh, so in one SAP system there can be uh, different. Co companies, so it's like the client name, it's like a different company name or the something like that. But they have some default uh, co like technical uh, clients, like default ones. And the, most of the companies don't change this. So you can connect with using the uh, early watch user uh, with the default password. and. You can try to execute uh, this transaction as here 37, but you will see that you are not authorized to use uh, this transaction because this user is, uh, the rights are limited. But what you can do is execute another transaction, it's called SM51, and use the method grab. Grab is, uh, you know what is a grab. <laughs> so this, uh, in SAP this is the same, and uh, the thing is that the method grab is calling the th grab function. So it means that by calling the grab method, uh, we can exploit the same vulnerability, but in a different way. So here in the grab, we just uh, insert the pattern, like the same, uh, just executing the IP config, and that's how we. Yeah, the cow we can execute the operation system common. Okay. So 
Uh, next is interesting thing is the in SAP there are um, many uh, kernel calls. So the kernel calls is like the uh, they are written on the C language, and they can be used by developers in their uh, function modules. And the idea is uh, uh, one of our colleagues uh, from Virtual Forge company uh, found that uh, kernel calls can have the uh, buffer flow vulnerabilities, of course, because they're written in C, and they were written, I don't know, 10 or 20 years ago. And, but the problem was that uh, to exploit the kernel call buffer flow, you need to have the function, which is calling the kernel call, and the parameter uh, in this function uh, must be uh, uh, bigger than the... So, I mean, if, uh, if the kernel parameter is... Uh, so, to exploit vulnerability in the kernel function, you need to have uh, the name field more than uh, this number of characters. That, this means if you have the function model, where the name is limited to uh, I mean, 60 characters, it's impossible to exploit. So you need to have, uh, you need to find the special RFC function or report which have the bigger input than this. And they also found the one of the reports which is ex uh, vulnerable. And so how to exploit this? Uh, actually, you need to run the RFC function, uh, which is a big parameter. You can run this RFC function as I showed before uh, using this some sort of kind of transaction or remotely. And you can insert the big uh, name value with the exploit and this value will be transferred to the kernel call and in the kernel call the vulnerability will be executed. By I will show this example a little bit later. But this is very critical, and you can gain access to the operation system, the full access. Uh, but again, it's not easy to exploit, the first of all, because you need to have uh, uh, the access to this transaction, and you need to write the exploit. And, and the problem is that there are many operation uh, many kind of operation systems uh, supported by the SAP, many kind of versions, so uh, you need to have a multiple, uh, you have a different exploits. And the one thing, if you, if you uh, want to make a penetration testing for the SAP software, don't even use the memory corruption vulnerabilities because if something goes wrong, you probably will have more problems uh, <laughs> uh, then, then good things because if, if you compromise the SAP system uh, by your exploit, it will be very bad. Uh, so we have uh, two interesting things. So uh, invoker select uh, is a special functionality. So uh, in the SAP there are NetWeaver ABAP engine and NetWeaver Java engine. So in the Java engine, uh, we have uh, different, uh, they can be uh, servlets, and the security of the servlets is uh, secured by the web XML file. Uh, but there is a thing which is called invoker servlet, and it's used by the rapidly calling uh, the uh, Serlet by the use of the class name. So, for example, we, we have a, this kind of uh, XML uh, file, and um, there is a, some kind of Serlet which is called critical action, and we can uh, connect this Serlet by using this URL pattern. But here we can uh, see that uh, admin uh, folder is only uh, can be accessed by the admin role. So it looks like uh, only admin can execute this action, but really, in reality it's not because uh, there is a function, functionality in Walker Serlet, and if we call uh, 
select and then the class name, uh, we can do it without any authorizations because the security is applied just for the admin folder, not for the select folder. So if you are using the invoker select and invoker select is uh, enabled by default, uh, it means that you can execute any kind of uh, Java class uh, and you can bypass authorization. And this is very easy to exploit. You, you don't need to know anything, just uh, I will show you what, what can what can happen. So there are many uh, invoker selects or semi web services that can be uh, attacked in, a, in, in this way. Uh, but the thing is that you need to find some kind of uh, web service uh, which do some kind of critical action because there are many web services which just show some kind of information, it's, it's not critical. So we find one of them, uh, so we were, yes, we were trying to connect uh, so we were trying to connect directly and so the authorization request, uh, then we we connect it uh, directly to the servlet. And we see that the interesting things like the file name and show file. So it means that we can read any kind of file. And so this is very nice. We can read the, some kind of uh, secret TXT. Yes, I input this file into the folder just to show you that they think it's working. Uh, but the interesting thing that uh, we can read any kind of file, like for example the database file, and so many many um, uh, companies think that uh, the, all the data which is stored in the database uh, of the SAP is like uh, it's very hard to understand what kind of data stored and where. And uh, but in reality, it's not very hard because. Uh, um, the table name in ASAP is the same as the table name in the, or for example, Oracle database, or in most cases. Uh, so what you can do is you can easily uh, read, for example, some kind of uh, database file directly. And but this file is very big, so and what you can do is just uh, try to find something nice, uh, cool like USD. And you will probably find that information about the people um, who, who buy something and the prices and etc. So I don't know exactly what, what, what it is, but it's just to show you that uh, Critical information in database can be easily found and easily downloaded from the internet. And okay, so the most interesting thing is the ver verb tampering vulnerability. So again, the web XML file. And what we have is uh, uh, some kind of uh, resource, like it's restricted access, and we have the security constraints like uh, only admin can uh, execute get method in the admin folder. And it's, it looks like okay, but uh, in reality, what, what will happen if we use the head method instead of get method? We can execute anything because there is no information about head method. And this is very strange. It, mean, it means if we don't mention the get method, it will, looks like, uh, it will work like every method is uh, for the admin. But if we mention the get method, it means that get is for admin, but others is for others. And 
So if, if you put the get, you should put the others like head, post, and etc. So it's a very easy way to uh, bypass the, the restriction. And the problem was uh, to find the interesting application which is vulnerable because in the default installation of the SAP is like 500 different applications. And so we found uh, and about 40 of them were potentially vulnerable. Uh, we found the, the most interesting uh, application is called CTC, uh, which allows you to uh, remotely execute any, uh, remotely manage the Java engine. So it's like create user, add user, to, uh, add role to user, or execute operation system common. So it's like anything. And all this stuff can be uh, executed by the head request. And another thing is, even if it's patched, it can also be executed by the previous vulnerability, by the invoker servlet. <laughs> so to patch this issue, you need to patch the invoker servlet vulnerability and verb tampering vulnerability. And this is, uh, this is very critical. How, how much time I have? 10 minutes? And yeah, and I have bonus track for you. <laughs> so, um, this vulnerability was presented in the Black Hat, so, but uh, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, we found the Dilbert message servlet. It's called Dilbert, uh, and really this is a testing servlet. Uh, so you send some kind of information and uh, it asks, uh, answers you with the Dilbert messages, like funny, funny strings. And <laughs> Yeah, this is really funny, and you can. Uh, it, it it's it was uh, it's like anonymous XML uh, interface. You can send any kind of XML packets. Uh, okay, so what we can do with the XML packets? So everybody know about the XML external entity, and everybody know that it's possible to do. Uh, I mean, HTTP request to other hosts and etc. Or read files. But it's not, not very interesting. So what we found is uh, the Gopher, uh, you know the Gopher protocol is, I know it's, most of the people probably don't know this protocol <laughs> because it's very old. And, but it's supported by the, uh, uh, Java, uh, by the Java. And what the attacker can do, so any ideas what can be happen if we send this, uh, this XML? So the thing is, um, we'll show you in detail. So you have some kind of server uh, which, which you can uh, get access, for example, from the internet, some kind of web portal. And you make a post request with this XML with a Goofer request to the IP address and the port of an internal server, which you cannot connect directly. So what this system will do it's like take all the AAA symbols and directly send it to this port. Because the Goofer is a perfect relay to transfer all kind of data. So you can send any kind of uh, application protocol through the Goofer. Not only HTTP, anything. Any kind of remote exploit. Uh, but there are some kind of problems. So to uh, to show you that this is, it is working, uh, we take the one uh, vulnerability, which I was discussed before, the buffer overflow vulnerability in the ABAP kernel. Uh, but it's not easy to exploit because uh, uh, you need to call the uh, RFC functions. And uh, what we can do by the Gopher is just send uh, one request. But the RFC protocol is like this uh, session. and. So it's not very uh, easy. So it, it's probably uh, possible, but we decided to use the web RFC and just send the uh, web packet. So, but the problem, but another problem is that we have a limited size of the shell code because, uh, but we don't want to make some kind of bin shell code because if we make the bin shell code here, we don't have a chance to connect to this. So it's unusable. Uh, so the interesting shell code, for example, uh, is like the reverse DNS shell code because uh, 
there are many chances that this server is, uh, have access to the DNS. So we can use the DNS shell code, reverse DNS, but it's more than uh, 255 bytes. And what we found is um, an XML engine uh, store the XML data in the RVX memory. So we can do the XML spraying. So it's like every parameter which what you can uh, you send in the XML packet can be stored in RVX memory, and it, it, it can be used for exploitation of uh, other vulnerabilities. You just send XML to spray the memory, and so it, it's like this. Uh, yeah, this is like a e hunter, uh, and this is a ex exploit. So uh, in the pro just uh, in one of the parameter, you send this, uh, save this information in the memory, and in this exploit, which is limited to 255 uh, bytes, we just make an ink hunter, which is searching this in the memory. So by this method, we can uh, execute any kind of uh, the exploit. <laughs> but what we should do is take all this request and put it into the goofer, and we're lucky because uh, it supports the URL in code. Uh, so you can make all, all this request, make the URL in code, and put it into, the, uh, into this place in the goofer. And this is very cool because um, not any IDS system can uh, understand what the hell has happened here. So you can uh, probably you can bypass not only the firewalls by this method, but the, the IDS systems and etc. So the final exploit will look like this. We send this uh, request to uh, the server, and here will be the big packet. Then this server will take this packet and send it to the uh, WebRC service, and we'll ex shell code will be executed and send the DNS uh, to that. Uh, by the DNS uh, request to the attacker. So it's like the full control of the internal system through the internet. Uh, so what can I say is like, uh, the, we are working with the SAP uh, directly to prevent all the kind of uh, issues like this or similar, and this issue is closed by the SAP, uh, but it's not closed in the Oracle official GVM. So you can still use the gopher in your penetration test. It's very cool. And what you can do if you have an SAP uh, systems, you, can, uh, you need to regularly patch it and uh, take care because uh, SAP is really now taking care about the security and the only problem that the administrators must implement all this stuff. And it's, it's all in your hands. And if you want to know more about the SAP security stuff and etc. you can follow our presentations in uh, other events. And you're welcome to the Zero Night Conference. So, anybody have any questions? Come on. Yeah? Uh, no, I saw the one company uh, that used wireless connection to the uh, internal, uh, to the corporate network. And corporate network was not, uh, so it's like SAP was in the corporate network and it was not secured by the firewalls and anything. So what we do is we just easily connect it to the SAP uh, from the car in 50 minute, uh, meters from the company headquarters. Yeah, but uh, I don't think that is uh, very common. I mean, yeah. there are these iPads, iPods, whatever, and very fancy tools for, for the high management. They really like those stuff, but they cannot connect without uh, wireless. Uh, I mean, uh, but it's a problem of be, be, uh, bring your own device or something. It's not really related to the uh, SAP security. Yeah. 
basically, but. Um, yeah, so the question is. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. I'm not having a with the NetWeavers on the server application, uh, but what about uh, using this kind of cracks uh, uh, if the server application is using Java security? For instance, uh, you won't be able to connect to any Docker port or something like that. So. The question is, what do you mean? What if? Uh, what if uh, the Java security uh, is implemented uh, by the NetWeaver? Uh, what do you mean by Java security? It's a it's kind of um, policy. Uh, uh, what uh, what port is reachable? What uh, what can you do by the server container itself? Ah, okay. So. Uh, It's a good question, really, because we don't test it. Uh, but uh, we use the XML, yeah, and the uh, XML entity is uh, used to call the in, uh, DTD from the remote host. So it means that the this can. But if you disable this, the functionality is probably uh, will not possible. But uh, but uh, as we see in uh, different implementations of the uh, XML engines, they need to have the remote connections because of the DTDs. So it's not only in the SAP you uh, test the banking applications and etc. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's a very good question, and uh, probably we will check this later. Okay, that's cool. You have free answers to zero nice. <laughs> yep. So thank you. If you don't have any questions, I'm here for questions. Anything.